Hawaii Five-O was a popular series that holds a significant place in pop culture, captivating audiences with its thrilling, crime-solving narratives set against the stunning backdrop of Hawaii's landscapes. In this video, we're taking a look at some of the gaffes and bloopers from the show, as well as some interesting behind-the-scenes facts. Switching Cars Continuity errors can happen on any show, especially when they're first getting going. Hawaii Five-O was prone to these, and early on they seemed to happen a lot with the cars they were using. McGarrett, for example, would often be seen pulling up to the police building in a four-door sedan, which is all good except for the fact that when he left in a previous shot, he was driving a two-door. But maybe only certain viewers would notice the difference. However, a car changing colors is another issue altogether. In the episode Cry Lie, Danny's car literally changes colors in the blink of an eye. It starts out black, but is suddenly green in the next shot. Now that's a fast paint job. Exploding cars, sort of. Not every show has the budget to just blow things up whenever they want, and this seemed to be the case with Hawaii Five-0 in the episode Death Watch, because while they tried valiantly to make us believe a car exploded, our eyes told us otherwise. In the episode, a bad guy gives the keys to his car to his girlfriend, but when she starts the engine, it triggers a bomb in the car that promptly explodes. The only problem? They clearly only used a harmless smoke bomb when they shot it, because you see the car from a few angles as the smoke is around it, and the smoke only blocks parts of the car, but for all the areas of the car you can see, it's still in perfect condition. Not super likely if there had been a real bomb. But hey, you can't blame them for trying to keep that car in working condition to use again in another episode. Shoe-ins Safety is an important element on any set, and you can't blame an actor for wanting to wear sensible footwear to make sure they stay on their feet. This is especially true if they're filming at a location where they need the extra grip of a nice rubber sole to keep them from falling. But it's a hilarious misstep, if you will, by the costume department to have the actor switch shoes in between shots. In Hawaii Five-0, there are multiple times that they end up at a cliff spot overlooking the ocean, and often these were action scenes involving someone running along the rocks. So clearly, from a safety standpoint, you can't fault the costume team for putting them in sneakers. But the problem lies with the scenes shot just before the cliff scenes. Often the actors were clad in non-sneakers up until the moment they were on the cliff's edge. A prime example of this was in the episode Not That Much Different. In it, the killer has on comfortable loafers for much of the scene leading up to the climax on the cliff. But when he starts to jump down onto the cliff rocks, he suddenly has sneakers on. So either this bad guy was a psychic who knew he'd be on the cliffs at some point and was able to swap his shoes out in an instant, it's probably just a continuity error they had to be okay with for safety reasons. Nice necklace. The costume department had another small but noticeable goof in the episode Savage Sunday. In a scene in a hospital, we see a patient who had been shot talking to McGarrett. Throughout the back and forth, the shirtless victim has a noticeable chain necklace dangling across his chest. And then suddenly, there's a shot of him completely bare-chested. It's a bit of a mystery how that managed to happen, given that there was no change of scenery or moving around. Those are the types of things that might result in the costume department forgetting things from one shot to the next. But in this case, it was a patient literally just lying down and not moving. Maybe they stopped during the scene for lunch, and then the actor forgot to put his chain back on. Prison can change you. This goof is one that might be considered a plot point, but it's hard to tell. The episode Ways of Love has McGarrett heading into a prison undercover, so naturally he's dressed like an inmate, and added as a cellmate to the prisoner he's trying to get info from. This inmate, who is the episode's primary bad guy, starts talking to McGarrett as he enters. As McGarrett introduces himself, he rattles off his fake inmate number, which would normally be fine except for one big issue. He says a number which should have seemed alarmingly familiar to the bad guy. That's because it was literally his inmate number. So maybe the writers were trying to hint that McGarrett was trying to think quickly because he hadn't memorized his own fake number and he quickly looked at the other guys and recited that? Or perhaps it was a case of an actor forgetting his lines and just reading a number in front of him. Hard to say, but regardless, it seems like the bad guy should have caught on to his ruse pretty quickly. Nice dress. Another costume issue happens in the episode Sweet Terror. The producers decided to have a flight attendant greeting people as they board a plane clad in a lovely floral dress. 
It was a nice touch of Hawaii-based authenticity, since you do admittedly see a lot of bright and floral dresses there. However, the flight attendants primarily wear standard uniforms. It seems the production team realized this, but a little too late. Moments later, we see her helping a passenger. At that point, she's wearing the more apt uniform of a flight attendant. So in theory, she had one outfit on for the boarding process and another for the flight, but that seems a little overboard, even for a flight attendant with her heart set on entertaining the passengers. So it seems it was a standard goof by the costume department. Double Weapon the editing department isn't exempt from potential bloopers either. This was especially true in the days before all of it was done on computers. So sometimes you'll see something happen twice in a row, which seems to make no sense. It means they maybe were deciding between two shots and somehow both got left in. In the pilot episode, McGarrett finds someone who's been murdered. They still have a knife in their hand, so another officer takes it out and tosses it aside. We then see McGarrett on a phone conversation about the murder. But then, when the scene jumps back to the murder scene, we see that same officer literally doing the same action, removing the knife from the victim's hand and tossing it aside. It's a classic example of a double edit, man, they should have caught it before the episode aired. Mystery Phone the audio and props department aren't immune to goofs, and we can clearly see it on the episode Samurai. In it, McGarrett hears a phone ring and picks it up. However, one distinct aspect of his phone in the show is that instead of it being a normal ring, it was sort of a buzzing sound. So in this case, we see him pick up the phone and expect the sound to stop. But for some reason, it keeps buzzing. Clearly, someone dropped the ball on the buzzer sound, either on set or in post-production. Hotel Police? One interesting thing about the show is that it was originally conceived as being about a detective who worked for a hotel chain. The idea was the crimes he was investigating would have only taken place at different branches of that chain. But then producers realized they would be limiting themselves when it came to potential stories to tell. So they decided they'd have the protagonist be with the state police. That was all well and good until they found out that at the time, the state literally didn't have a state police department. This could have been a deal breaker, but the producers and the network decided they didn't care too much about that aspect. Real or not, they wanted the show to be set around the Hawaii State Police Department, and the rest is history. Office Story in a little bit of fun Hawaii-based trivia, the office they used for McGarrett's office was actually in what's known as the Iolani Palace. It was the residence that the kings and queens of the island chain used to inhabit. By 1968, when filming was going to begin, it had fallen into a state of disrepair after not being inhabited for a while, and it hadn't been kept up at all. Regardless, the producers felt it would be a great location for an office, so they helped partially restore it for the shoot. The restoration continued for a while, and these days, it's in a much better state. If you're in Hawaii, you can even go on a tour of the house. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite episode of Hawaii 5 Let us know in the comments section below.